Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, we're Social Lens and we're here to present our uh, final thesis presentation. Uh, next slide, please, Omar. Uh, the team uh, consists of uh, myself, uh, Yusuf and Omar and Osama and Karim, uh, supervised by uh, Dr. Sharora. And uh, the outline for today's presentation is, first of all, I'm going to walk you through an introduction of the product and, uh, and what we're trying to accomplish and what our motivation is. Uh, and then uh, we're going to walk you through uh, a brief uh, system design uh, and then our implementation of each uh, component of our system, uh, as well as the mobile application, including a demo and uh, our project outcome and business plan in the end. Okay, so why is it that we're trying to, to solve an issue here? What is the issue at hand? So uh, there's no denying that we're in the age of uh, the internet and social media. And this, uh, this has become uh, extremely apparent during the last few months, where social media has sort of become uh, a substitute for, uh, for news channels. Uh, and it's caused uh, a lot of misinformation being spread online. Uh, however, uh, during these last two months, uh, social media usage for sure has gone up extremely. I know for a fact that my usage of social media uh, is at an all-time high. And uh, I'm pretty sure that doesn't just apply to me, but it applies to the majority of us. But this can be an extremely unhealthy habit. Uh, the amount of information on, on social media is too much for one person to... to to cope with, or uh, it, can be, it can become very overwhelming. And social media platforms are structured in a way that, that causes you to always go back for more. There's always more distraction on social media, causing you to waste more and more time, leading to a loss in productivity. Last but not least, it, it can actually take a toll on your mental health and uh, cause you to suffer from stress, anxiety, and lack of focus. Uh, therefore, uh, we need a way to manage our usage of social media and allow us to view content in a way that is healthy, uh, but at the same time not limit what content we want to see. This is where our work comes in. So our solution is to aggregate uh, the user's social platforms into one application where they can uh, perform the basic social media functionalities through our application. Uh, we're also categorizing posts uh, in the application, so basically categorizing into sports, uh, news, and so on. Uh, we're also fetching related posts, so if a user sees a post they like, they can see other posts related to that. Uh, and we're also uh, giving the, the user a personal experience. So uh, they're recommended certain posts uh, based on uh, what we believe uh, they would like to see. Uh, but first, uh, we have to analyze how does our product compare to our competitors. So when looking at other social media aggregators, we, we found sort of a trend with uh, products such as walls.io and Tagbox, uh, which are products that are helpful for, for managing uh, social brands. So you can aggregate your social data and you can perform the basic uh, social media functionalities, but there's, there's no personal experience to it. There's no filtering. Uh, there's also, we also found a study called uh, Sock Connect, which, uh, which attempts to solve the issue we're solving, but, uh, but lacks a lot of the features. So there's no personalized uh, recommendation. There are no basic social media functionalities and uh, you, you have to manually group the data. So, so the process is just a huge hassle. Uh, so uh, that's where Social Lens excels at. Uh, we can perform all of these tasks. Uh, and next I'll leave you with Karim to uh, discuss our system design.
I'll monitor off now. We can't hear anything. One second, sorry. Where we try to teach. Moving to our system design, let me first give you an overview about our system. So our system consists of two main components, which are the machine learning modules and the mobile application. For the machine learning modules, we first have the categorization module, which we use to categorize the post based on its content. Then we have the entity resolution module, where we try to match the same users from different platforms. Then our third module is collaborative based recommendation, where we recommend posts based on users' interaction. Then we have the entity extraction module, where we analyze the content to extract the entities from it. And finally, we have the content-based filtering, where we filter and group similar posts together. Then the second main component is our mobile application, where the user interacts with our system to view the data and perform social, basic social media functionalities. <clears throat> Moving to our system architecture, here we have each module running on its own, so it's easier for us to add new features or detect any problems in any module. So as you can see here, we have our UI, which is the mobile application, that acts with the API gateway, this is the authentication service to authenticate the user. And then we have our aggregation service, which collects and organizes the data, then passes it to other services. Then we have the categorizer, content-based filtering, and the entity extraction services that take the aggregated data from the aggregator and fetch the features from the database. Then they analyze the data and return the content to the user through the API gateway. Moving to our implementation. First, we have our categorizer, which simply categorizes the posts based on its content, so we can allow the user to browse the posts based on the category like sports, politics, and the other categories. And we also use this module's output in the content-based filtering. So we collected 1 million posts from Reddit, then we built our model using logistic regression, TF, IDF, and where to vec and then tested the model on 17,000 Twitter posts, and we got a recall of 80% and a precision of 81%. Then we have our entity extraction module. In this module, we use a library called Spacey, where we pass text to the library, and it gives each word a tag, like a noun, verb, and so on. So we can easily identify entities like, na like names or organizations from the text in the post. This helped us in two tasks. The first one was building a search function, where the user can simply search about an entity and find the posts that contain this entity. And the second task was developing our content-based filtering module, which Osama is going to explain now. Okay, so for the content-based filtering, our uh, uh, objective is to uh, find posts that are similar to each other. So uh, what uh, we have is to <clears throat> uh, transform these posts into a vector space where similar posts have higher similarity scores than those that are not. Uh, that's why we fit those posts into uh, a categorization and the extraction models that we had earlier, and then we uh, feed the, the output into the TF-IDF vectorizer in order to extract the feature uh, vector, and then we calculate the cosine similarity score between each pair of posts. Uh, and for the threshold, we want to decide uh, whether two posts are similar or uh, not. Uh, we uh, we thought of 0.7 similarity score. And to come up with this uh, threshold, we have to we had to try manually uh, with each threshold in order to find when does the threshold uh, start to become irrelevant. So here, as you can see uh, in, in the given example, we have two different posts. Talking, uh, the first one is talking about the American Bar Association, uh, rating uh, uh, Justin Walker as well qualified. And the second one is talking about the American Bar Association as well, uh, rating the President Trump's nominee, <clears throat> who is Justin Walker, uh, as uh, a powerful court seat. Uh, so two different uh, posts and in a slightly different wording, and they are both uh, uh, similar. And we used the same approach in order to uh, search for similar posts that have a high cosine similarity score to the given posts. Uh, and next, with the recommendation model, uh, our objective is to recommend for each user a set of posts uh, that he may interact with. For that, we went with the collaborative uh, filtering approach, uh, which depends mainly on other users' interaction with uh, different posts in order to 
cluster uh, similar users and similar items. So with the uh, matrix factorization, we have a matrix of uh, users by items, uh, mapping uh, the rating of each user to each item. Uh, and we are uh, trying to uh, decompose uh, the, this matrix into two matrices, one for users and one for items, where each user and each item have a set of latent factors uh, that our machine learning model is trying to train uh, into uh, producing the loss in the decomposed matrices. Uh, our feedback here is implicit and positive only, uh, meaning that we don't have an actual rating for uh, uh, each uh, item, but we have uh, an implicit feedback such as a like or comment that we map into a uh, rating uh, for the item. Uh, and uh, for that, uh, we went with uh, uh, a matrix factorization based model called the uh, Bayesian personalized uh, ranking. Uh, so, uh, what it does, uh, as you can see in the next slide, uh, it tries to uh, maximize the PBR optimization score, which is uh, giving higher scores for items that were rated positively by the users than uh, those that are not. Uh, and for evaluating such an approach, uh, we use the AUC uh, score, uh, which uh, uh, counts the uh, percentage of rightly ranked uh, uh, item pairs um, uh, from the data set that we have. So a 100% AUC score means that we ranked all positively uh, rated items by the user uh, to have a higher ranking than those that uh, were not positively rated by the user. Um, and um, uh, our experiment had a, a data set of worth of one month of comments on Reddit, uh, which was uh, more than 14 million comments, uh, and with a density level of 0.001%. Uh, and in order to um, make our model more relevant, we had to uh, increase the density level. So we used users who have uh, more than 10 ratings or 10 uh, comments and links that have more than 30 comments uh, in order to make uh, the graph uh, more uh, relatable. Uh, and uh, the, out the data set uh, after pre-processing was more than 1,700,000 comments. Uh, that were uh, that was uh, divided into training and testing, and the testing AUC score in the end was 75%. Uh, and uh, in the next slide, as you will see, uh, a set of uh, results. Uh, so here, this is uh, uh, posts that the user has commented on on the left. Um, first one is talking about John C. Riley, uh, an actor. Uh, then uh, John Wick 4, which is a movie. Alien is another movie, coronavirus, and COVID-19. So these are the important uh, uh, topics that the user is interested in. And on the right, you will see uh, the recommended posts. The first one is uh, uh, combining between the two interested topics, uh, which are movies and coronavirus. They're talking about the Avengers raising fund against uh, coronavirus. The second one is doing this as well. Uh, uh, one top of the virus, uh, a Lego like animation movie uh, talking about uh, coronavirus. And then uh, the third one is talking about the alien movie, which is, was in the set of comments uh, by the user, and, and so on. And now I will leave you uh, with Omar to talk about the resolution. So our final machine learning model is entity resolution, which is basically record linking, or in other words, it's the concept of linking uh, different entities to link back to the same person. And in our case, in social media, as everyone knows, everyone has an account on uh, every social media, and even some people have multiple accounts on the same social media. So the idea of entity resolution here is to link back all those accounts Account. using their attributes to link back to the same uh, person in the end. So to do that, we first have to have uh, ground truth data. So we need uh, common users between Reddit and Twitter, which are the social networks we used. And we were able to collect uh, 100 users manually by manually comparing usernames between both uh, social medias. 
and about 200 users scraped from around 21,000 users that only had their Twitter accounts connected to the Reddit accounts officially. So using this data, we decided to do to use a DTube, DDU Python library, which uses record linking, uh, mostly mainly by uh, string similarity. So the only attributes we found in common between Reddit and Twitter that were that exists in both accounts were the username, of course, the full name or the title, and the bio of the account itself. So we were able to collect uh, these data for the 300 users. And the library does a string similarities between all those attributes and it's based on active learning in which uh, the model interactively asks the user to compare between uh, like it gives you user one name user two and you have to say yes or no and you keep training the model manually. Uh, of course, we're able to do that only because the data set was not huge. We also try to collect the followers of every account on the both social medias, but of course we didn't have any interconnections. We could not find uh, like the ground truth link between uh, the users here and the users there. So we only used those uh, three attributes. And the results show by using different training and testing data from the 300 users along with the thresholds, it shows precision of 97% in experiment one, hundred percent experiment two, and recall of 74% and 51% in experiment two. And these numbers, of course, are inefficient, and it shows that the model is overfits and it's very biased, uh, especially towards the usernames, because in many cases of the accounts, after manually inspecting the data, uh, the name could be missing in some accounts and the bio could be missing in other accounts, so the only uh, major or the non-missing element in every account was the username so the models were heavily biased and that's why we were not able to find a decent model for the entity resolution and we were not able to integrate it into the app later on and that's of course because mainly because of the data set limitations and now on to our mobile application we decided to build an android mobile application linking it to twitter and reddit and the back end of the application was built using the Python Flask library and the database is MongoDB because of the NoSQL functionalities, which would help us a lot in analyzing data coming from multiple data sources. For the front end, we were able to develop the basic UI for sign up login, uh, uh, main screens, home screens, uh, the UI for adding social accounts from those uh, social medias a search method and categorized posts, and you'll see that in the demo. And for the back end, we were able to successfully integrate the APIs for all those functionalities, uh, login, sign up, reset, and the basic uh, social media functionalities, like, comment, and so on. We're also able to uh, integrate a search function, uh, get categories, get similar posts, and integrate every one of the social, uh, every one of the machine learning models we mentioned, except for the entity resolution because of its inefficiency. And now with the demo, Osama will explain our application. So there is no voice. Uh, just uh, one second. Sama, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh. <laughs> okay. So here uh, we add our accounts uh, normally, um, adding Twitter accounts, adding uh, the Reddit accounts we, that we had developed uh, the APIs for. Uh, and then we retrieve uh, home timeline from each account and then we do our data analysis on each post uh, uh, getting out the categories the entity uh, extracting the entities and finding duplicate posts as you can see here 
Um, and, and, and the back end, we uh, process the data in order to find uh, interactions with each post, uh, you know, trying to get the retweets on each post uh, uh, for our for the training, our uh, recommender model uh, to, to find the recommendations for uh, the user. Uh, Omar, if you can uh, go Skip five seconds. Get a. Uh, here we can again duplicate posts, and then we can uh, find similar posts uh, having a high similarity score. As you can see here, and then we can search by uh, uh, the entity itself. Uh, here are the set of posts having the highest uh, similarity score to the post. Uh, given. Uh, this is uh, accessing and filtering by uh, category. And uh, now we are trying to do an experiment where uh, <clears throat> and uh, see what the, the model uh, will recommend to us uh, after liking the political posts and we expect to have the posts uh, in the recommendation. Uh, yeah, and as you can see here, that uh, we got what we expected, uh, political posts, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, mainly from the, the uh, same uh, pages uh, that we accessed because they have the same user base. And here we do the normal uh, logout. So for our business model, as you know, our customers are the end users that interact with the mobile application, which offers them a high quality, easy to use program and the technical support feature in case, they, in case they face any issues. Then we have our team working in an office with a capital, so we can further develop our application using social media APIs from Twitter and Reddit and deploy our system on a cloud like AWS, for example. So here, our cost mainly consists of salaries, rent of the office and payment to key partners which hopefully will be covered selling directed ads to companies. Finally, for our capstone outcome, we have our product, which is the mobile application, where the user can do basic social media functionalities, and it is integrated with some of our machine learning models. As we didn't have enough time to integrate all the machine learning models in the application, we are writing a research paper to, doc to document all of our work and results, and we will be submitting it soon. Thank you everyone for your time. Hope you enjoyed it.